Okay, so uh, let's start a little bit speaking about JavaScript and we will have a break mm. um, in a while. Maybe just the introductory parts more boring. So uh, I tell you that JavaScript is, we are going to use JavaScript as a programming language. And for now we don't care if it's for the web, not for the web, we really don't care. We are trying to learn JavaScript as a programming language because actually JavaScript is the programming language for the web. Mm. It's the only programming language that the browser right now understand. Mm. So we are really learning JavaScript as a language and for the first week we are using JavaScript like you can use Python, C, Java uh, on a computer, on a desktop com computer to do stuff uh, like those. And then we will move to the web, clearly, but to have a stronger foundation, we are, we're going that. Um, so the goal, again, is to understand the specific semantic and programming patterns of JavaScript so that you can, as your colleague say, either not love or hate JavaScript, something in the middle, and so you, we can all share this, this sentiment. And we are going to uh, refer mostly to the 2015 version of the language. Mm? So JavaScript is way older than that, but we are going to, to use a relatively modern version of JavaScript that is currently supported on server side, basically on computer, through Node.js, and client side through the browser, with the browser environment for JavaScript that is already installed in all the browsers. Hmm? Um, well, this is the outline that we are going to cover today. So from the beginning, what is JavaScript, up to strings. Hmm? Uh, but you should be already familiar with this in other programming courses because we are, well, excluding the first part, types, variables, yes, you know what is a variable, right? Expression, control structure, if, for, while. Super expert, good. Uh, array, strings, mm? as a concept, you know what they are. So we don't need to spend time to say, oh, a string is this. It's done this way in JavaScript. And it works well for this and bad for these other things. Mm? So this is the outline. And we will start with this JavaScript. Well, it's a popular programming language. Um, and as I was saying before, is the only programming language that a browser can execute natively. So sorry, uh, just to, to remember, how many of you do know nothing about JavaScript? Okay, um, thanks. So it's the co are currently is the only programming language that a browser can execute. A browser cannot execute Python or Java. It's not able. So we, in any case, when we learn about web technology, we need to learn JavaScript, even if we want or not, but we need to, because actually if we want to do something more interactive or complex or add logic to web application, we need to do it in JavaScript, because we cannot really do it in, a, in other languages at a certain point. Hmm? So it's the only language that the browser understand and execute natively, and also recently, more recently, run on a computer, like we are going to do, thanks to Node, hmm, that is a, um, an environment for running JavaScript outside of the browser. Hmm. Uh, just to clear, to make two things clear, it has nothing to do with Java, nothing. Don't even try to, to look for similarities. Uh, it was named this way only for marketing reason, because Java was popular, in back then, and they say, well, let's call it JavaScript so that we can jump on the shoulder of the, of the big Java environment and names, etc. But that's really nothing to do with Java, so forget about it. And, and just to understand why we are, we are going to see some strange things, the first version was written in 10 days. So you can imagine the, the, the level of details and thought that was put in creating the first version of JavaScript in 10 days by one person, basically. Um, so several language decisions that we still have today were made because 
it was nice to do that. Or because yes, why not? Mm. Not because, so different from other programming language that add a structured approach, longer creation, JavaScript was really created in a quick and dirty way. Mm. So keep also this in mind. Um, so JavaScript was released in 1995. Mm. Um, and then, at a certain point, in 1997, uh, there was um, managed by two uh, companies, Netscape and Sun, that both doesn't exist anymore. Uh, and then, a few years later, an organization tried to take JavaScript as a language and standardize it, mm -hmm. and is ECMAScript. So the former language, or the former name of JavaScript is ECMAScript. So if you see on the internet, ECMAScript is exactly JavaScript. It's just another name. Mm? ECMAScript is the specification for which JavaScript builds on. Mm? So we have mm, this ES123, et cetera, is the ECMAScript specification number one, two, the version one, two, three, et cetera. And it's a specification evolving. So here, this slide stop in 2017, but actually we have ES9, ES10, ES11, ES12, etc. So every year, you see, every year in June there is a new specification recently. And things are in becoming interesting with uh, ES5 and 6. We are going to speak about ES6 but things start to be interesting in ES5 because at that point this committee started to say okay let's make JavaScript a real language mm? maybe we can you know add classes mm? and we can add modules and we can add other things more complex more that brings JavaScript from let's do something at a full programming language that can be used also outside the browser mm? So we are, again, focusing on ES6. It is also called ES2015 by the year. So all of these, ES6 is ES2015, ES7 is ES2016, etc. Just a different name. Uh, for which they, you see, added something. So for instance, here in 1999, they added a regular expression. There was no support for regular expression. Uh, they added a try-catch for exceptions. Uh, do while and some methods for the string just to manipulate string not manually only and then they added classes here and that's why we are targeting this 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 moment because classes were added here um, and also some smarter way to handle variables were added here uh, etc mm. uh, and then it continues clearly mm. um, also take take in mind keep in mind that these are the standards and it's not that on June 2021, they release a standard and the day after, all the software in the world was updated to comply with the standard. Mm? So it needs time. So browser currently don't support the newer version. Not all browser support the newer version of the standard. Mm? So all of them support ES6, that is the baseline. Some of them, some feature of newer, version of the language are included in some in some browser in some level but it's a really fragmented word and varied so one thing is the standard one other thing is the actual implementation that we can find in node.js or in browser but with a, a, a specification seven years ago we should be fine um, so ECMAScript, again, is the official name of the language, of the standard. The ESX is implementation of the standard. And um, as I so told you before, ES6 were, and 5 were a huge version of JavaScript uh, um, to, to bring that. And starting from 2015, earlier release of the standard and the language started. Mm? And you see the committee behind JavaScript, behind, behind uh, um, ECMAScript has a few names that you may recognize. Mm? Small companies that you can recognize in the slides. Mm? And still are there. Mm? So clearly there is 
the formal standard, uh, but actually is not readable by a um, normal person. It's because it's highly technical, highly legal, also in some aspects, because it's a standard. So it needs to standardize things. So it exists, uh, and if you want, it's here. Um, but I, I'm not going to tell you more, more than this. Mm? We are not going to see the standards. Mm? Absolutely. So JavaScript to work needs some engine. Mm? So some these engines, uh, so the one reported in these slides are actually used in browser. Mm? So there is the Google engine that's called V8. That is the one using Chrome, Chromium, etc., and also Microsoft Edge. And then Mozilla has its own engine for Firefox. Uh, Microsoft had an engine uh, that was called the Chakra Core uh, that was using Edge, but now Edge uses V8 of Chrome. And JavaScript Core is the one used in Safari for Apple system, also in the, on a mobile phone, clearly. So these are different engines that implement the standard, but they are developed and maintained separately, totally separately. And Node.js here hmm, uses the V8 engine of Chrome, of Google, to, to work, hmm, to provide interpretation to the language. Hmm. And I would tell you before, there is, hmm, th these are tables that you can find in the uh, Mozilla documentation that I have open here. Mm. So at a certain point in this documentation, this is arrays mm. of the Mozilla documentation. There are also sample, what is an array, how to create it, uh, etc. But at a certain point, you see this browser compatibility. Mm. That is a huge list of all the array methods and feature and properties. And it's telling you for each browser from which version was supported. So, for instance, the at properties of arrays is not supported by Internet Explorer. Mm? And it's supported by Chrome from version 92 of Chrome. So, if you have version 91, this is not going to work. Um, but these are quite old versions. And this list lists a lot of browser, mobile and not. Mm? And also, here in the last column, Node.js. Mm? Because some of these, uh, libraries maybe exist on the browser, but does not exist on Node, and vice versa. Mm? So, for instance, here, this fi find last, that is an experimental feature. So, it's not yet standard, but is already implemented. That is, I find a lot in JavaScript and in the web, web technologies. It's actually, is a draft standard, is supported by Chrome, and this is probably uh, Firefox uh, version 97, but it's not supported by Node.js at all. Mm? So there is no version of Node that supports this. And other things, like this one, are not supported, currently supported by any browser. Just a native version of, I don't know what is this, of Firefox. Mm? Uh, clearly, Edge, Chrome and Edge are more or less the same things since they use the same engine. So this table is, is useful because for, for the standard things, for the simple things, clearly everybody supports everything. So the arrays are supported since Chrome version 1. And since Node.js version 0 0.10, so early in the beginning, now we are, uh, Node, no, we are using Node 16, so that was version 0. Um, so, and, and there are a lot of things, but there is not homogeneity, there is not uniformity in this. Mm. So these tables are really useful if you are doing something in JavaScript because not all browser implements everything, and especially the newest thing. Mm. So this is also to keep in mind, one thing is the standard, one thing is the implementation, and then there is experimental feature that some browser implements but are not yet standards. So it's, it's a messy world mm. uh, in general, but also for browsers and JavaScript. Uh, other feature of JavaScript, other, maybe not so nice feature of JavaScript, JavaScript is backward compatible. What it means? It means that something at, at that moment, 
that something is accepted as valid JavaScript, it will always be valid forever. So you can now still use things made in 1995 for the first version of JavaScript. Because it was valid in 1995, it will be, it will be forever. Um, and the idea behind that was that the, the committee member that created the standard has this motto that is, we don't break the web. Uh, we complicate life to developer. That is the corollarium of the, of the sentence. Uh, so it's backward compatible. So everything that ever existed still exists and will be never deprecated. Maybe you are discouraged to use that. Maybe there are new things that disable those functionalities, but those functionalities are still there. So if you really want to use it, you can. And then you have a lot of responsibility on what you do. So JavaScript is really powerful, but give you a lot of responsibility on picking up the right tool to do the right job. Uh, uh, being that backward compatible is not forward compatible. So if they add something today, they will not be bring back to previous implementation. So nobody is going to implement in an old browser something that is new. If you want, you have to update your software, your engine, if you want to pick something new. Mm? Again, not to break the web. So once you a browser target a specific version of JavaScript, that is. If you want to use that JavaScript, you are going to use that version of JavaScript forever. Mm? You, you don't have new features. Um, then, since we don't break the web is uh, a good idea in practice, but not, not so much, a good idea in theory, but not so much in practice, uh, at a certain point, they introduced a mode that is called strict mode that happens to disable uh, some old and dangerous semantic of the language. Mm? So the, the semantics still exist, the things still exist, but with strict mode, you cannot use it. Mm? So it's a safe net for you not to use then bad things. Mm. Um, and then there is actually ways to uh, avoid this backward and forward compatibility that are these two things here that's called transpiling and polyfiling. So for instance, transpiling is a li some libraries like Babel is one of them that try to convert automatically new JavaScript syntax, syntax into the old way of proceeding. So you write 2022 JavaScript code, and then through the software, you can have the equivalent version of 10 years ago, if you want. Mm. So this is to, to avoid some of this, of this problem. Mm. Uh, or the, the other one is polyfilling. Mm. So JavaScript version X doesn't support these, but I, do, I have a library that work with that version that adds this feature to the previous version of the language. Mm. So if I use the standard JavaScript plus my library, I can do something that was, wasn't possible with JavaScript. Mm. So these are the two ways in which the JavaScript community uh, try to do things, considering this backwards compatibility and the fact that it is clearly not forward compatible. And we are going to use this strict mode, always some new features of JavaScript actually enable the strict mode automatically. So we are prevented to do bad things, let's say. Uh, well, this is, uh, again, a, a picture of the various JavaScript execution environment that you can find. Uh, we already said there is the browser, there is the runtime, but there are also development tool that allow you to interact with JavaScript in the browser, uh, there is Node.js, for instance, for computer that works for Linux, Windows, Mac OS, etc. Um, and there are also some interesting tools like JavaScript Tutor or the JavaScript Console that allow you, and I open here the JavaScript Tutor, they allow you to uh, write code. So it's pythontutor.com slash JavaScript Tutor, um, the JavaScript, JavaScript.html. Um, so as the name says, this is for Python, because Python tutor. 
but it supports multiple languages, not only Python, and they have a version for JavaScript, so in where you can write JavaScript code and um, random code in this moment, mm -hmm. and you can visualize the execution when it works, uh, in this case the server may be overloaded, okay now it works, um, in which you see what happens, you also see a mm, pictorial representation of what happens with data structures in JavaScript, so the first one is a variable with a number, so you see that it is already there, 5 is under the, the variable, a, the other is an array, so actually in the container of the variable you have a pointer to the actual content of the variable that is somewhere else in the memory. Mm? So this is a picture representation of what happens, mm? if you need support for better understand how things work and why some things work in some, in some way. If you have questions, just interrupt me, it's not a problem. Um, okay, this is a screenshot of JavaScript Tutor, and clearly the browsers have the, the console. Mm -hmm. So here, if you open a browser, let's go back here, and you do inspect elements, or just inspect, mm -hmm. you have the console tab. Um, let me clear it, mm -hmm. where you can as before, write JavaScript code. Okay, it doesn't do large, but uh, you can write JavaScript code, and if you press enter, it will give you a result of the operation. In, in this case, it's just a variable definition, a equal five, a equal five, um, and so the result is nothing, because I just made an assignment, but if I write, I don't know, console.log, hello, uh, it will print out hello, mm? because console.log is the print, mm? to print something on screen. Mm? So you have this in the browser, you can interact with the JavaScript that is in a web page through the console, you can experiment on your own, there is JavaScript Tutor, there is Node.js, mm? so all of these are environment that allow you to write JavaScript code. So before having a break, let me just say a few things about the structure of the language. So we, we covered the, the most um, theoretical part, let's say. So how it works JavaScript from a file perspective. You have one file, one JavaScript program. And each file is loaded independently from the others. Different files can communicate together there is some mechanism for importing other libraries, etc. We are going to see it uh, later. Um, and it was uh, added recently, hmm, let's say, it was, wasn't present in the beginning, and it, it is this module mechanism hmm, that allows you to import and export and share hmm, function methods variable between different JavaScript files. Hmm. Uh, how it works? Uh, so JavaScript is, um, is, can be considered an interpreted language. Do you know the difference between interpreted and compiled language? All of you? Oh, good. Um, so it's, it's interpreted, can be considered as interpreted, but instead of a traditional interpreted language that is processed line by line, like Python, hmm, which you have the first line executed, then the second line executed, etc. Uh, so this maybe is, this is something that happens in the in the console, for instance. But when you run an entire program, what it happens is that first of all the file is parsed. Mm -hmm. So there is a an in parsing of the entire file. Then JavaScript builds a tree out of the file for the execution, and then execute navigating this tree mm -hmm. from top to bottom of the of the of the file of this tree. Typically, this doesn't, let's say, in a modern usage of JavaScript, this 
is, is something that you don't see, but some specific strange things that JavaScript does, does it, it, can be, it can be done thanks to this mechanism. First of all, the file is parsed, is build a tree, and then the tree is executed. Mm? So it's not executed line by line as you have. Mm? So for instance, you can, in JavaScript, uh, use a, a variable before declaring it. Mm? You can say print a console.log a, and then after 10 lines say, oh, a is a variable, and it's five. And when you add, so line 10, you have console.log a, and line 20, you have variable equal to five. a equal to five, and it works. It prints five. Uh, so clearly, this is possible through this. And this is bad. This is really bad. So I told you that exists, and now forget about it. Uh, you, you don't need to, and strict mode prevent this, actually. But this also happens for function, for instance. You can use a function before declaring it, before defining it, thanks to this, because the, the tree is built by parsing the entire file, so at a certain point, it finds a function, definition and links to the function execution, to the functional call, even if the function call is 100 lines before the definition. Hmm? Uh, so this, again, is enabled by this, and uh, JavaScript relies on standard libraries. Mm? So there is a standard as a language, and then there is libraries that are standard that are slightly different from the browser and from the node, Node.js. Mm? So uh, APIs provided by the standard libraries by the execution environment, Node, the browser, that allow you to do things differently. Mm? So just to make an example, in Node, you can open a file on your computer. In a browser, you cannot. You, you don't typically have access directly to, to the file system from a browser. Mm? It's self-contained, the browser. It's a protected environment. Um, from a browser, I think that you can open the webcam of your, of your computer and get the image from the webcam from JavaScript in a browser. Fr from Node, I think, I, think, I, think no, I think no. It's not possible. Uh, so there are differences, not in the standard libraries, but differences in the API provided the, the execution environment because one runs in the browser and one runs on a computer, on a server. So there are differences in how things work. Okay, last two things and then we are going to have a break. Uh, so the lexical structure, JavaScript is written in Unicode. So you can do whatever you want. You can declare, as, as shown here, an emoji, like a content of a variable. This is really nice, but maybe not, maybe not so useful, but it's nice. No? You can have this angel assigned to the variable x if you want, and then you can print it out because it's Unicode. So you can support whatever. Also non-latent charter, and also clearly everything that is not a uh, latent charter, including emoji. Uh, JavaScript as a language is case sensitive. Comments as are like in C. Mm? Um, literals and identifiers, variables, for instance, needs to start with a letter, with a dollar, or with an underscore. You cannot have variables started with a number, clearly, hmm? because it's not a letter, not a dollar, it's not an underscore. Um, as all the programming language has some reserved word, like for, while, do, try, catch, you can imagine, and the syntax is C-like. So we have uh, parentheses, and we don't have strict indentation. So all the things that you have in C, in C++, in Java, etc. All the syntax, the way of writing. And semicolons are um, a hard discussion in the JavaScript community. Semicolons are not mandatory at the end of the line um, because they are automatically inserted in some condition um, that are listed here. This is a debate. So if you want to engage the, the JavaScript community, just say, let's speak about a semicolon. And you will see, no, semicolons are not needed. And the other one say, yes, semicolons are needed. And that's why, because JavaScript uh, insert uh, semicolon when needed, and here there are the rules. But in some cases, if you need a semicolon, 
is not inserted. And so you have to remember that in some cases you have to insert them. So for uh, peace of mind, um, we are going to use semicolon at the end of the, of the line. Mm? So we, or, or in reality, during the course, we will loosely follow the Google style guide for JavaScript. Google has an internal document that made publish on how they develop with JavaScript. That is a style guide here, listed here. And so we are going to follow that as convention, even if it are not standard in the language. And so we are going to use semicolon. First, to avoid remembering those rules. Uh, I don't remember those rules. Um, second, to prevent problem. Because even if you remember those rules, there will be one moment in your life in which you should have added a semicolon and you didn't. And if you have a 1,000 uh, lo lines long program, then it will be fun to find where the semicolon should have been added. So as, as a norm, we are going to add semicolon at the end of the line, even if it's not mandatory. So you can skip it, but if you have problem, then have fun. If you don't want to have problem and don't want to remember this, just add semicolon. And the rules for semicolon are the same as in the other languages. So at the end of the line, a semicolon. Uh, but here there are, there are rules. And before moving to strict mode and something more, a little bit more, oh, no, let me do strict mode so that it's, it's actually finished the, the, the set of slides. So the strict mode is that directive added to prevent using previous bad uh, behaviors from JavaScript, and it's just a string. It's actually writing in the first line of your JavaScript code, use strict, that's it, as a string. So older version can ignore that, it's backward compatible. Older version, when C use strict, say, well, it's a string. It's not even in a variable, I don't care. And doesn't give error. But the newer version recognize that that string has a special meaning, and it's a directive. And from that on, disable all a series of behavior in the rest of the code. So at the beginning of the course, before moving to React and to some more advanced feature in JavaScript, we always start our programs with use strict. First line, use strict. And then we can start programming. Uh, what means that uh, code is executed in string mode? Uh, for instance, there are some examples, but not all. Uh, eliminate this problem in which you can define a variable Call a, uh, use a variable before defining it, for instance. Um, fixes also some mistakes uh, that make it difficult for the engine to perform some op optimization. So code could be more optimized from the engine. Um, so strict mode code can, faster, can sometimes run faster than the same code without strict mode because the engine, the parser, is able to optimize better. Um, Eliminate some errors that were silent and now they are thrown under ex ex exception. So they can be seen uh, on screen on the console, um, et cetera. There is no octal literals, et cetera. So there are a long list of things, but it, it's really uh, useful for preventing error, preventing strange behavior, old behavior, and have a more safer environment to write code. Okay, so before going here in types of variable, we can have 15 minutes of break. And if you have any question, I'm here. <laughs>